I am so excited to show you this new model that is in Sogni. It's Flux Context and it allows you to change images uh, using natural language. You can edit parts of an image without it changing other parts of the image. Or you can take two different images together and smash them together and come up with something new that incorporates elements of both. And it just does what you tell it to do. Flux Context is super awesome. Uh, the best thing I can do is just show it to you. So come check this out. Now, the first thing I want to generate is a pink sloth with a unicorn horn wearing a psychedelic hoodie in a futuristic sci-fi starship. Now, I'm actually, instead of generating this in context, I'm going to use Flux Crea, and we do have a tutorial coming out on the other new models that we have, Flux Crea and Flux Chroma. But for now, let's just use it and let's generate it. Flux Crea is great at generating photorealistic ones, but it also, I just really like the style it does. You know, it's not necessarily going to do photorealistic, as we can see, but it still just does a really good style. I think this one right here is our winner. I love it. I'm going to save it. And if I wanted to, I could edit it with context right here, but I'm actually going to leave this one as it is, and I'm going to bring it back later. And what we'll do first is we do need to change our model to context. And when I do, I also want to point out that you'll notice with Kriya as well as context, there are these little icons right here, this checkered flag and this star. And what these mean is that this is a premium model, which means you need premium Spark or Sogni tokens to generate it. And the reason why is because these aren't open source models. We're, we're paying to license them. And so they require premium Spark, but they're amazing and they're totally worth it. So let's go back to context. We're going to close out this image and I'm going to bring in one from my computer. So I'm going to scroll down. When we're using the context model, we get this new context window, which allows us to choose one or two images that we can use as reference images. And we can also do auto refresh, which I'll explain what that means in a second. Now I'm going to bring over this image I have of my dog and let's zoom in. There's my handsome dog, Steve Irwin. Perfect. Now let's go back up to our prompt and we're going to change it. Now what I'm going to do is describe what I want changed in that image that I uploaded. So what I'm going to say is I want him to wear a tuxedo. So I'll say change the dog's coat to a tuxedo. And it's great because all I have to do is just tell it what I want changed. And let's imagine. All right, we have a couple different variations of it. And this one, you can see it just did the front of his coat. We have kind of a more, let's say, complete tuxedo on this one. I think I'm going to go with this one right here. This one is our winner. And I'm going to, again, save it. And then when I click edit with context, we can go ahead and choose which one we want it to be. Let's use it as our reference image. And then if you see down where our reference image is, there we go. It just completed it exactly as I wanted it. Now, instead of just changing what he's wearing, let's change the style of the image. And what I said is reimagine the dog as a 3D animated cartoon character at a fancy restaurant with warm lighting. Now let's see what we can get out of that one. Now, what's really cool about this is that it keeps the same character, but it, it can change it in so many different ways. And we have kind of varying degrees of how much it changed it. This one right here, I think is probably my favorite because it still looks like him more than the other ones. So I'm going to save that one. And now what we can do is we can combine two images into a single one so that we can have the sloth we created and Steve Irwin in the same photo together. Let's edit with context again. Let's make this one the reference image. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to grab another image and I'm going to put the image of our slothicorn as our second guide image. I don't really need to make any adjustments to these. I don't think I think they're pretty good. So I'm going to scroll back up and do a new prompt. And I'm saying the dog and the pink sloth are playing poker together in a smoky room with overhead lighting. Now I am thinking when I do this that, let's go ahead and hide our settings. We can see them a little better together. What I'm thinking is that these are two very different art styles. So what I'm thinking I should do is choose either the 3D animated cartoon art style, or this is kind of like a, almost like a colored pencil or marker kind of art style. We could just say digital art. And so I just put in digital art style so that we can bring the sloth to be kind of matching the digital art of the dog. And here we go. Oh, that's our winner right there. I love it. Looks so good. The only thing is neither of them know how to play poker because that is not the right way to hold your cards. Anyway, let's save it and let's do something else. Now I'm going to generate a new image. And what we're going to do is generate a kind of advertisement or a, a sign that we can use because I want to show you how you can edit text with context. And these are good, but let's just make things a little more interesting. Let's change our aspect ratio to, I think, standard. Yeah, standard is great for this one. Let's, let's do it again. There we go. And you'll see that as we often get with AI, we can get some of the words will be really good and then some of them are not. And we're gonna use context to fix that. So let's, I think this is the one I wanna go with and I'm gonna change this one. We'll change that word and we can change what it says at the bottom. So let's save it and let's edit with context. And what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to turn auto refresh on and let's minimize our settings. And now every time I generate something, it's going to automatically take the image that it generates and put it as our reference image. And it's going to only generate one because obviously if it's automatically going to refresh it, then we only need one. Now let's change some of this typography. 
And I'm keeping this simple and just saying change the word under diner to best coffee while maintaining the rest of the image. It's a good idea in context to tell it what you do want changed as well as what you don't want changed. All right, so I did a great job adding best coffee here, but now it says Mike's coffee, which is fine. We can quickly change that back to diner. So let's say change, and we're gonna change red coffee word to diner. Excellent, all right, so now we have Mike's diner, best coffee, and then we've got some gibberish down here. We also have it not quite centered, so what I'm gonna do is scroll down and show my settings here, and I'm gonna just zoom in, at, oh, zoomed in way too much. Let's zoom in, let's do like 110%, and then I'm just gonna move this so that it's centered. Maybe 105, maybe 108, something like that. I might just get rid of the border, but for now, we're gonna leave it and let's hide the settings. We're gonna change the text in the bottom section to say breakfast served all day. I put breakfast in all caps. I'm kind of hoping that it does breakfast in one line and then served all day in the other line, but we'll just see how it does. Ooh, and it did it. It did misspell served, but we'll fix that. And then I'm also going to do one last one after that and we're gonna clean it up. I did decide I'm not crazy about the checkered thing on the side. So let's zoom just like that so that we don't have the outside part at all, which is great. So we're gonna change the word served down here to just say served. Oh, see, now it's pretty much perfect. I think one last thing I could do is make it so that it's clean and make it so that it doesn't look like an aged photo, but I'm gonna actually save that one because I think that's pretty good. So I just said, make the poster look clean and minimalist while maintaining the colors, the composition and the typography. And this is what's so cool is like, I'm not a designer by any means, but with this tool, I can kind of design things in a way that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do and still make ones that are kind of one of a kind without relying on like templates and things like that. There we go. See that clean, minimal, perfect. Now it's a brand new one. It's like Mike Steiner just rebranded. <laughs> And we just scratched the surface of the surface of everything you can do in context. So go ahead, go play with it, and then make sure you share what you do with us, and then I'll see you in the next one.